everybody, welcome to an Epic My Name Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the flip side of our video from a couple days ago. You guys know that we did do my all-time favorite WWE action figures. If you missed that video, definitely go check that out before you watch this video, or just watch it just after, you know? It's probably somewhere down in there, and it's, it's probably recommended right there. But anyways, guys, we covered all my favorite ones, you know, the ones that I love to look at, the ones that I love to pose around with, the ones that I just dream of and I freaking love, and I look at them, I'm like, damn, that's a good football figure. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the opposite side. We got the the ones that I just, I look at and I'm like, God, 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 dang, man, what the hell is that? What the hell is even that? And you know, it's not too often that this happens, but we do get some. And some of these, I don't even have in my collection anymore, so I'll just have to pull them up on the screen for you guys. So before we even dive in, I do want to go ahead and mention Elite 50 Rhino with the massive boulder shoulders, and then Elite Series 72 Velveteen Dream. Both of those are on my list and I don't have them anymore so I definitely want to talk about those two first. Just good lord man. I don't know why they make Velveteen's Dream's torso so damn massive and the boulder shoulders were a definite no-no. But I think that's all the figures I'm missing from the video. The rest I do have in hand that we're going to talk about guys. So let's go ahead and dive into my least favorite Mattel WWE action figures of all time. Starting off, get my dumbass out of the way. I'd put him back here but then I'll just be looking at my dumbass face the whole time so we're going to move him out of the way for good. All right. Let's start things off with one of my favorite wrestlers, guys. Actually, probably my favorite current wrestler, Kevin Owens. But this is no ordinary Kevin Owens. This is the Elite 43 Kevin Owens. And actually, at the time of release, it was like, damn, bro, that's a good KO figure. But now that I have it for so long, I had to put this on the list. Because every time I see this head sculpt, I hate it. I despise this head sculpt. I think it looks nothing like Kevin Owens. I felt like it never looked like him. And I remember when it first released, it was right when I started thinking about doing the pick fed. And I ordered this figure to include Kevin Owens in the pick fed and after getting it I just like look at that face man I just don't like it and a lot of people love this face scan I don't like it at all I, I've seen some great banger pick fed matches with this figure I just don't like this figure and it can actually pose around really really well but I uh, the, the arms and the face sculpt just ruins it for me so for that I am putting Kevin Owens elite 43 figure on the list moving on next guys we do have a figure that I think a lot of people can agree with the Wrestlemania 36 Cactus Jack or Mick Foley figure now I Obviously, this is a head swap. This is uh, the Cactus Jack Elite 48 figure with the new WrestleMania 36 head sculpt on it. And I mean, just, just look at this freaking face. Look at that. Does that look like a figure that looks good to you? Good God. I don't like this figure simply because of the head sculpt. The figure from the neck down is great, so I did a head swap with it because the figure now, the WrestleMania 36 Elite with that Cactus Jack head sculpt on it looks freaking beautiful. This one, however, I cannot stand that head sculpt, man. I just, I just can't get over it. I think they were going for this face right here. I'm not buying it, Brad, and if you're wondering, in the last video, my favorites of all time, we stood up all the figures. These are going to be laying down because 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 they fail. Let's move on to another, guys, and this one is a two-in-one. Now, we're going with the Target exclusive NXT Johnny Football and Tommaso Ciampa. Now, the only reason these guys are on here is just I felt like, you know, if you compare these two to their to their updated elites, Elite 69 and Elite 70, Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, those two figures blow these figures out of the damn water. You also have the kick pad problem where... You you know, they gave us this short boot mold for some reason. Instead of giving him the full kick pads, they even did it on the Elite 70. They ha both have small torsos. They both are, uh, you know, Tommaso Ciampa, he got the updated skin tone because he, he was much darker than that. And I don't know, man. These just, uh, these are kind of a failure. Might have a little bit of problems with them. And just mainly, Ciampa's not as big of a deal as Johnny Gargano is with this. And it just, it just always got on my nerves. So their replacement figures are much, much better. Moving these guys onto their, to this list here today. Moving on, guys. We have the worst Posable figure of all time, and anybody who's ever pick fed it will know. We got this armless Eric Rowan figure. Now, this is the Elite 48. The other one will do as well. I think it's Elite 30 or 31 Eric Rowan with the green jumpsuit. He's supposed to have arms, obviously. The arms are the best part of the figure, but this guy can't do any damn thing, man. You try to do anything posing with him, he's super difficult to pose around. And anybody who's ever pick fed, if you try to do a power bomb, it's impossible because his arms can't get close together because of this little, uh, his jumpsuit top 
right here at the top of the shoulders. They prevent his arms from going in. It's super frustrating, and this figure always got on my nerves for that reason. Pick fetting with it is god awful. Just trying to do anything with it is god awful. So for that reason, I put it on here. Obviously, if you don't pick fed or pose around your figures, then yeah, you know some of these aren't going to be on your list. You're going to be like, why the hell is that on the list? And that is why Eric Rowan must be on my list here today, Brad. So right there, that is Eric Rowan. He had to be included. Moving forward, guys, we have a figure that a lot of people have mixed feelings on. You either love it or you hate it. It is the Elite James Ellsworth. And when this figure first released, I've never been a fan of Ellsworth, so that's one reason I'm not really big on this figure. But the torso, just it does not crunch forward at all. Like, look at that ab crunch right there. It does not crunch forward at all. I always thought that the arms were so freaking skinny, and I guess they're kind of accurate. But um, even if you just take the waist up, it's like, yeah, it's not that bad. But then when you get into the leg problems, uh, I know these boots aren't accurate. I've actually switched them out. But he has, like, these tights uh, molded on there. And some of these figures had that problem where he's too tall. I think You can see that it looks like he has tights molded on. You can really see it here on the lower leg right there. And uh, a lot of them got, like, I, I don't know. Some of them were fixed. Some of them had the accurate height and the accurate leg mold. But this one does not. And he just looks super odd how, like, lanky and long his legs are compared to his torso. He just looks odd, man. And I know he's an odd-looking guy. But this is just, I, I don't know. I just don't like this figure one bit. And then you combine it with James Ellsworth, the character. And it's just one of my figures that I'm just like, get, 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 get out of my face. If we move forward, guys, we have a figure that's actually a damn good figure. But for me, um, I guess you can go with this personal one because this is the Defining Moments Razor Ramon figure. And it's actually a really good figure with a ton of accessories, Defining Moments. And the only reason that I dislike this figure, if you guys can already tell, the mother effer's legs are so jello lello awfulness that uh, I have to put it on here every single time. I've owned this figure three or four times. Every single time, it has this loosey-goosey problem where it's just like, look at his legs. They have a freaking mind of its own, bro. Like, look how freaking loose that is. I don't know. I, I just had to put it on my list because every time I get this figure, and it's a beautiful looking figure. Look at the pop and the saturation. It looks great. It's a beautiful head sculpt and everything, and it just freaking, I mean, he can just air walk all damn day. That's what you get. If we move forward, guys, we have Bumfoot Elite One Rey Mysterio. Now, we had to add this guy to the list, and the reason that we're adding him to the list is I'm going to do a little comparison right here. If you guys can already notice, he's, like, hunched forward a little bit already. Like, you can't, like, straighten him out for some reason. Like, if you try to straighten up his legs, they push forward. And if you'll see here, the legs, I've gone over this multiple times. They have the pine cone joints right here, and you guys know what those are. They're, these are not ball joints. So when you try to push this leg forward, look how it pops back in place. He can't just do a simple front kick. He can't even do a front kick with the, like, look at that right there. Look at how strong that is. It doesn't even stay in place. It does like a back kick. It splits okay, but he cannot move his legs forward and backwards, and he's just really complicated to pose around. It just feels like a stiff garbage that's about to break in half. Now, if you compare this with the, the one that I love, the Elite 72 Rey Mysterio, this one is brilliant. Look at that right there. Look at that right there. I can bend his legs. I can stand him up straight. I can do all these things. They don't pop back. I can literally put him in a seat position if I want to, and I don't have to worry about any of that. And then if you come over here with this guy, I mean, this guy is just, look at that right there. He's just all over the place, jumping back in motion, and I had to put him on there. This figure is so much better than this figure, and it just shows how far Mattel has come, but I had to put the early Rey Mysterios on here. It's not just Bumfoot, it's all the Rey Mysterios that were early on with that, you know, pinecone joint, long pants mold, had to go on the list, which brings me to another problem, which is the Elite Mark Henry. Now, this one isn't the only one that, uh, you know, the, the, the pine cone joints or whatever. This one specifically, when I first got it, has knocked over my damn figures on my shelf a hundred times because he has loose, like, look how loosey-goosey his ankle is right here. And every time I put him on the thing, he would fall forward because he's, you know, he's heavier. He's a heavier figure. He's heavier than most of the Mattel figures. You put him in the back for some dumbass reason. This idiot right here put him in the back. He would fall forward and all my hose would just fall off the shelf, just... <laughs> And it was just abysmal. On top of that, guys, his legs are just super, just, you can't really pose him around that much. They're definitely better than the Rey Mysterio, but you hear that clicking and clacking. He's just, I don't know, man. Mark Henry's not the most flexible guy in the world, but, I mean, you give him these large knee pads, you can't even bend his knees that much. His legs don't move as good as they should if they were on ball joints. And I just feel like he's too small, man. He's supposed to be Mark Henry. Six foot four Mark Henry. I want to show you guys something. See, there he goes. You put him flat on the ground 
ground, right? You put him flat on the ground, he's supposed to be six foot four, right? Okay, I have Buddy Murphy right here, five foot eleven. It's like, okay, yeah, that looks that looks okay. It's not too terrible. But then if we get six foot three Bobby Lashley and you put him up next to Mark Henry, what is that, Brad? Yeah, how about that? That them apples. He's too short. I just feel like he's too small to be what he's supposed to be. You know, he's supposed to be big, gigantic Mark Henry, crush your soul and eat your family, and he's out here being shorter than Bobby Trashley. So I really love Mark Henry. I want him to be great. I'd even have him in the pick fed if he had better figures, and maybe with that Nation of Domination figure, we could figure something out or something, even though he's bigger now. I don't know. I'd really like to see a better tooled Mark Henry figure. And now if we're moving on, guys, we have a personal figure of mine. Now, this one's just a custom that I made a really long time ago, and every time I look at it, it makes me sick to my effing stomach, and not in a good way. Okay, I tried to make a polo version of Triple H when he got the WWE Championship in 2002, and I used an RS IRS figure, but the black chipped off. He has a really loose waist. His ponytail fell off, and his sealant just went to hell. And so I really hate this figure now. Like, it, it just, every time I see it, I'm like, God, I hate that freaking custom. And here I am, just still looking at it. I had to include that here today. Moving forward, guys, we do have a couple of icons right here. We have the Iconics. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I like, I love Peyton Royce. I think she's an underrated talent. I think that, you know, she can be what she can be. I wish that her character wasn't so annoying on TV, but uh, she won't stand. Do you see this? I'm trying to stand her up. She just won't do it. I included Billy Kay, even though, because they're a pair, you can see her leaning back there. But since they removed the ankle articulation on, uh, you know, new basic figures, a lot of new basic figures would be on here if I was including including basics, but I had to include this because this can represent all of them. You guys can just see here, I'm trying to stand the damn figure up, and you have to do it so specifically or it will fall over. It's kind of ridiculous. Like, I should just be able to sit her here and her stand up, but she just refuses to stand the hell up, and it's so stiff. It's like one big giant piece of plastic. You can barely move her around. It's basically like having two statues here, so you know what I'm saying. If You, you know what I'm saying. With the new basics, you know what I'm saying. We have just a few more here, guys, but we do have to get into this basic Maurice figure. Now, this is similar. Um, the reason I don't like this figure is because the legs are so stiff and the ankles are so weird and so tall that she is super hard to pose. I remember when the pick fed just started, doing an entrance with her and Miz was terrible. Trying to go down a ramp, bro, this shit was terrible, and I was new to posing, so I didn't really know how to manipulate it to get it to work, and her legs are so stiff, and the, the heels just don't want to work, and you're trying to go down the ramp, and it just made me want to throw this figure a mile away and never look at it again. So I had to include Maurice in this. Again, a, most, a lot of these do have personal memories attached to them and why they're on the list, so I want to get that out of the way. But um, we're moving into the final four. Now let's move into the final four. Next up, not a huge deal, but I did want to put it on there. I just wanted to mention that I, I think that the shield gear is pretty badass, but in figure form, we've seen so many of them and I hate to pose them around. I really don't mind the Roman Reigns ones for whatever reason that is. I like actually posing around the Roman Reigns. But for Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, you know, shield figures, I don't like them, bro. I, I don't know what it is. It's like the ankles and they're like all stiff. I, I don't know what it is. It's kind of hard to explain. Maybe it's these boots, but Roman Reigns has those boots. I really don't know what to say, but the shield figures always have gotten on my nerves trying to pose them around and stuff. So I have the shield figures on my list of my least favorite figures of all time. Into the top three, guys. You guys know what I'm talking about. We had to put Braun Strowman on the list. Now, this is actually going to change a little bit probably because because every figure of his is basically the same. We've seen re-release after re-release. And that's the reason he's on here. He's also kind of difficult to pose. I actually had a lot of fun posing him around at Hell's Gate. But uh, for this, you know, his ab crunch is, is decent. It's not, you know, as bad as James Ellsworth. But overall, I just hate how often he's re-released and it's the same exact figure. You could say the same for Cena. But Cena's figures, you know, you get a different shirt or you get a different hat or you get, you know, new short colors or you get, you know, good posing out of that guy. Anyways, and he's my favorite of all time. So so, I mean, I don't know what to say. I can appreciate a different attire, but when it's the same exact figure except different boots maybe or like the head sculpts tweak just a little bit, I don't know, man. I'm just not big on the Braun Strowman figures. However, the new Elite 76 and the new, uh, is it the Top Talents coming out? I think those are definitely his best figures, and I cannot wait for those, but Braun Strowman's most definitely on my list. And let's get into the top two. This one's probably going to be a big old shocker, guys. I don't think you're going to see this one coming, and that is my own personal custom Fiend figure. Now, this one, 
version is going to come to a shock to a lot of you, I'm sure. But first of all, this head sculpt, uh, I, I like the head sculpt. It's obviously sculpted by BEW and then casted. But then the original cast doesn't look as good as BEW sculpt. I don't think it can capture the magic that BEW did. It's not possible. You know, you just can't get anything like the original, which doesn't look bad. I don't mind it. But the I went with the Rhino Torso, and I ran into a bunch of problems attaching this Rhino Torso to the Bray Wyatt crotch. And then I also attached some sting legs to it to get the, you know, the molded on pants here. And uh, my boy Rodney did some hands for it. And it was just a really big Frankenstein effort. And I ended up doing like decals for the arms. And I had to like remove the logos on the front and get the tattoos on there. And just overall, this guy can't even spin his waist. He has a super duper loose ab crunch. And I just don't like it. It doesn't even look that bad. And it works great for, you know, predictions and setups and stuff like that. But personally, like when I know all the things that went into it and everything behind the scenes for it, I just am not a big fan of it and it, it really disappoints me. Until we get the new Fiend figure, this one is going to probably be on my least favorite figures for that reason. For all those problems that it has, all due to my fault. It's all my fault. I didn't paint the head sculpt very well in my own opinion and I don't know. I just, I, I'm just not big on it, man. It was just a, a custom that just does not do it for me or live up to the standard that I'd like to have. So for that reason, I'm out. And for the worst figure, this is, this is probably my all time. This is all time, probably worst, at least favorite WWE action figure of all time, guys. You probably already know what it is. The ringside exclusive Shield Kurt Angle figure. Oh my God in heaven. Okay, so let's go back in time, guys, before this figure was created. Um, when they booked this decision, when this decision was booked, when we had it booked and Kurt Angle was going to team with the Shield and take on Sheamus and the Miz and everything in that TLC match, I didn't like the booking. I thought it was garbage. I didn't like the match. I didn't like anything about it. My boy Kurt Angle was returning to the ring for the first time ever. I think Roman Reigns got sick or something. He had to miss. Bray Wyatt had to miss. Remember, it was the TLC pay-per-view where everything hit the fan. Kurt Angle comes back for the first time ever, not even in singlet. He had to dress up in this terrible shield gear, which we've already mentioned in the past that I don't like. And then they had that terrible match that I did not enjoy. It led to nothing. It meant nothing. I think Braun Strowman, was he a heel in that match? Or was it Braun, Kurt, Shield? I, I don't remember that shitty football game. But then we got it in figure form, and it's just, oh my god, look at this head skull. I don't know, man. Just not a fan of this figure. It's definitely down there. It may not be the ultimate worst, but it's definitely on my top worst of all time. But I hope you guys enjoyed. You know, uh, it seems that you guys like to see my opinions regarding worse and things that I dislike. People like negativity over positivity when it comes to stuff. But I think that's going to do it for my list, guys. Let me know down below what your least favorite all-time WWE Mattel action figure is. I would love to know. But I figured you guys would love to see my worst since we saw my best. But I'm going to get the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you missed the best ones, definitely go check those out because it's a lot more positive than this one. But anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.